Well, hello. Donnie Walker here. Who else, eh? That's some um, impersonating Donnie Walker. How do you know it's really me? That's yeah, me. Okay, I got Buckin's sweater on. My Aspen fuel hat. My safety glasses. Versus, or slash reading glasses. Look like bubbles off of Trailer Park Boys, eh, guys? <laughs> you guys ever watch that? Maybe you guys down in the U.S. never seen that. Trailer Park Boys. Kind of a weird Canadian comedy. Anyways. Okay, 390 here. Broken crankcase right off here where the chain brake handle army sits, eh? Broken right off. So I'm going to strip this down and we're going to uh, put a case on it. That's how I strip them. Have ourselves a box. Put the bigger parts in and a smaller box to put all your nuts and bolts in so you don't lose anything. These have some torque screws on it now, which are nice. I like torque screws. They don't really strip out the like L on ones. It's easy. Top cover off. Let's get our starter off. Now these days you can buy a short block for 390s, which is a, a cheaper way to go than replacing the case and the bearings and crank. Um, I think they're like $299 because you a brand new case. New bearings and a crankshaft. You can't beat that, eh? Same with the small new series, 572s, 555s. All those now have short blocks available. Okay? This one's got the blue ignition, which is the rev limiter. They rev limit out at 13,000 RPM, which is fine for a big saw, but some guys like them a little more RPM, and that's when I put the black coil on them that are non-rev limiters, eh? Okay, so let's get our coil off because I'm going to be replacing the case. And I might throw the black one on here. See how it goes. Maybe not. You got to learn how to adjust your carburetor right if you're running the blue ignitions. Because they won't rev any more than 13 thou. But they still got to have fuel. So what you do when you adjust the carburetors for these ignitions. Is you get them to hit 13. Then open the high speed up a little bit more until it's about 12.8. Then turn it until it just hits 13 and no more lean in that. It's not going to rev anymore, so there's no use push turning your high speed and to lean it out more because it'll just run hot. Okay? Most ignitions are marked right on them. 13,000 this one, okay? 372 X torques are around 13,4, 135. Okay, let's get the carburetor off. I don't have the proper tool here. I, well, I, I, I can I can get the clutch off, but I'm gonna take it uh, into the other shop where I'm gonna take the clutch off in the top end. I'm just gonna get the tank and stuff off, ready to do the bottom end, okay? Or switch up, you can switch out and do the wires. Always be checking that blue wire, switch wire, to make sure it's not been uh, arcing out here in the case you can see it starting to get a little bit war where it goes through the case check them out because they arc out in there you think it starts running crappy right all right handlebars off let's get them off always have a little screwdriver like i sh showed you before take a tuning screwdriver and sharpen it up make it like a point to clean your screws out the heads of the screws so it's uh, your Allen wrench doesn't strip strip the, the head of the screw. Okay, here's our handlebar screws up. Dropsy dropsy. Okay, these impacts are awesome, and these nice drivers that you tap on. This is a four mil, three eighths drive Allen driver. There's handlebars off. Okay, set those aside. You got limiter screws in here. What the limiter limiter screw is is it limits the movement of the of the uh, chassis of the motor with the with the um, anti vibration springs, so you don't end up breaking the springs. Some still do, but they're there just to, so you don't over over stretch it. You can take those out if you want, or leave them in. They actually use work really good. Because they're kind of a a blunt end, eh? I use these I use these screws to go into fuel lines when I take them apart, so that the fuel doesn't go everywhere, eh? We'll just keep that one aside, and that's what we're going to use it for in a sec here. Okay, so all the mount screws out, limiter 
screws. There's actually one, two, three of these type of screws in the case that you take out. Mount screws. Okay. Undo your throttle line. Undo your fuel line. Watch, there still could be fuel in it, so that's why I'm going to put that screw in it. See, it's squirting out. Okay? No, it doesn't. Now we can take the tank off. Now we have that screw in there. I'm just going to take that out for one second. Take the tank off. There's our fuel line. Okay? Not that, not that, it's going to take that long. I need to take the tank off. Tank aside. Pull your wires out. Switch wire. This side of the case is actually in good shape, so I'm not even going to, we're, we're not going to um, take the rest of this wire off. Okay. Carburetor. Three mil T bar. This has got the newer Walboro one on it. Some of the first ones had Tillotson's on them. EPA carburetors, and they work really well. Don't really have any carburetor issues with these. Only if guys aren't servicing their saws right and not clean, changing their fuel filter once in a while, you'll get um, debris into the screen of the carburetor, which I showed you before. Okay. Carburetor's off. Choke out. So it's right there. Okay. Let's get our... Let's get our... Bar plate off. This fellow is running a... This fellow was running a still bar so it's got the cannon adapter on it that you can buy at walker saw shop to run still bars on your husky these work great they bolt right on where the where the where the brake or the um guide plate is bar plate is okay okay all right that's off let's get our uh bucking spike off it's got torx type screws Never really stripped the heads of Torx ones. Great design screw. I'm glad Husky's gone that way with them. Okay. That's a larger bucking spike. Pro safety one. Five point. It's a lot of the fallers like here in the big wood. Okay. Get our uh, clutch drum off. Clip, washer, sprocket. Inspect your sprocket. This one definitely needs to be replaced. After about every four chains, you should replace the sprocket so it doesn't go out of pitch and stretch your chains. Okay, clutch drum off, clutch bearing off, into the box. Okay, now we got muffler. Let's get the muffler off. Four mil bolts and, a, and, a, and five mils on the inside. Okay, some of them need to break free by hand first. Okay. Five mil. The inner bolts. Okay. I can strip these down. Strip these down pretty quick. Bottom up for bolt. Six mil driver. Oh, right there. Bolts in the box. Up for over in the big box. Plates. Take our flywheel off. So we can throw these seals in. Nut. Washer. Into the box. You don't really need a puller for these flywheels. I just hold them up. The weight of the flywheel, smack them on the sides. Off it pops off, eh? Integral keyway on them makes them easier on and off. Not, not like the old 2100s and 3120s, you gotta use the proper puller. All right, there we go. There's our little turbo jet, which needs to be replaced. That directs fresh air from the flywheel, which they call air injection, which John Sir used to call turbo. It's just air injection. It goes up this tube, keeps your filter clean, gives you a little more power. And uh, this one's broken though, we'll be replacing it. Okay, garbage. The screw. All right, so now there's our intake. Block off. I'll take this to the other shop. I don't have the proper uh, 
clutch wrench here. I got the three prong one for the older style clutches, but this newer one with these springs, which I don't like this style clutch with these springs, I like the other style. They keep changing. Once in a while they come with these, next time they come with those. So take it to the other shop, get the, get the clutch off, and split the cases, and I'll show you that, and then reassemble it. So there you go. It's almost a short block. Once I get that clutch off and the cylinder off, then that's a short block, right? Like a, like a car engine or, or Briggs or whatever, right? So yeah, that don't take very long to strip them down, eh? I used to be able to strip 372s down, replace the crankcase, put them back together in about 45 minutes, as long as no one bugged me. Um, you know, got me out of my sequence, eh? And then, just because I do it fast doesn't mean I don't do it right. I do it right and never have issues, really, okay? So that's Donnie Walker showing you how to the stripping down of quick 390 and I'll show you um, installing the um, bearings and the case after that. I'm not going to use the short block on this one. I'm just going to put a used side case on it and show you how to set the bearing properly uh, with the Husqvarna tool for the right offset of the bearing. A lot of Husqvarna's like 372s, 395s, old, old school ones. You just heat the cases up, put the bearings into the bottom, done. But this one on a 390, they're set into the case just at a, at a certain uh, distance. I have a tool that does that. Um, or a lot of times I just make sure the bearings, even with the crankcase on the inside, it's usually set pretty much right. Then you have to center the crank just a tad to make it uh, turn it over nice and smooth so it doesn't have any binding action. So there you go. We'll get back to that. Uh, next video, I'll, I'll show you how to put the case together and we'll reassemble it and we'll run her up keep your saw out of it sticking the ice rubbing her up tgif have a great weekend take your kids fishing go do some cutting some wood whatever you want to do watch tv watch the super bowl sunday super bowl sunday 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 have a great day